Hi, I want to talk about uh, how to do rigging on static meshes in Unreal Engine. I'm on the Unreal Fellowship on Animation at the moment. I've learned this all in the last three hours and it's just blown my mind. So I wanted to record it for my benefit and for yours so I don't forget it and then you can learn from it. So I'm doing it on this lighting fixture because that seemed like a really good place to start with rigging. Um, here is a real one. You've got panning, you've got tilting. Right, just two controls, that's all I want. Um, but it's a little bit of a challenge when you're trying to rig up something that's a rigid body. It's probably a better way of doing it with blueprints, but this is a good example for how to build your own control rig. So the first thing is, is that I have um, uh, separate static mesh parts to this. They came in from uh, a plugin, which I shall find for you and show you. The modular concert stage, which you can buy on the marketplace. It has meshes, lamp parts, robot head. A lot of people call these robot heads. Um, we can't use a blueprint, we need to start from scratch. So we've got the three components. And click and drag these in. And grab the, oh, I've lost it underneath. Where's it gone? Head, there. So just make sure that's in line. And then I merge them together using a static mesh merging tool. So I shift select them all. Go up to Actor, Merge Actors, Merge, save it where you need it. And that's how I created the one that's here in my scene. Let's just go back to it, browse to asset. So this is my static mesh, which uh, is just a completely dumb set of polygons. Uh, let's just bring it over here so you can see. Nothing really special about it. It's just the merge, uh, merging together of all the things that uh, we're in the scene a minute ago, so it's just loads of polygons. So nothing special. In order to turn that into something that moves, we need to make it into a skeletal mesh. This is a new feature in Unreal, I understand. You right click and you need to get convert to skeletal mesh. If you can't find it, that's understandable. It's because it's a new feature. You have to load this new plugin. The plugin is called, if you search for scale, uh, skeletal mesh editing tools. It's experimental at the moment, but that's what allowed me to do what I'm doing at the moment, what I'm showing to you. So close that down. Um, so you right click, convert to skeletal mesh, um, ask you where to put it, you get some settings. Uh, and what it does, it creates for you a skeleton, a skeleton and a skeletal mesh actor. Um, now, these are actually kind of linked. You open up one, you get both. So I'm gonna click on the skeletal mesh and it loads up this window here. So the skeletal mesh, uh, I've already built some bones. I'm going to show you how I did that. Uh, and in, in your skeleton, you will see the bones once they've been applied. So if you're starting from scratch, you'll just see the root. Um, first thing to do is to click on your root, create, uh, oh, no, click on your root, right click, add, but oh, I'm in the wrong section entirely here. Need to go to skeleton, skeleton, edit skeleton in here. And we need to go to add. So now we go to right click new bone. So when you've opened it up, you probably saw that first of all, but I was still in my skinning section from the last time I did this. So new bone um, creates a, uh, a new bone. F2 to rename it, I'm gonna call it spare. And you wanna make sure these are all in the correct hierarchy. So everything comes down from the root. And obviously if you're gonna start like, you know, you're doing body and you've got different bits to it, they all need to have their own um, bone chain as well. So I'm gonna delete that because I don't want it. Um, so just make sure that you are aware of your X and your Y axis if you just want to go up in the Z and vice versa. Uh, so that's that. Then you go into your skinning tools. You have to accept it. If you don't accept it, you um, won't see it in your skeleton mode. It won't be there. So then you go into your skinning mode and there's lots of different ways of doing this, but I used edit weights and edit weights. You, you can select it by a brush where you can sort of just sort of paint your brush, uh, your, your weights on for the skinning. Um, I use vertices because I'm doing sort of polygon editing. You can select the object that you want to uh, to skin. Now when you first get this, it's probably all one color. Um, I've already done this, which is why I've got the three different colors. So you select the pan uh, bone, go to your uh, vertice selection, and then you can start control selecting or shift selecting. So shift to select, control to deselect, um, and just try to get all of what you want and nothing of what you don't want. Once you've got it, you will press, um, you need this flood, put the flood up to full and press add. And add will 
make whatever you've selected um, added into that bone, but you need to also make sure that you've deselected everything. So I might even start off by just selecting everything and you move this flood amount down to zero and then you go to replace and it replaces it all with zero amount. So I'm not going to do it to all of my model because it took me a long time, but if I just select these ones in the corner here, just to demonstrate, I'm currently in the pan uh, bone, which is the red, red bit. If I do add, it's now made all of those part of the skinning for the pan. So if I try to pan my fixture now, it's going to end up moving those vertices around. Um, if I want to get rid of it, I'll remove my flood mount down to zero and hit replace, and that sticks it back now. So that's how to skin. Once you've done that, you should have um, uh, the option to accept it again. I'm not going to because I've already done it. So I'll cancel that, and we can close these down. What we need to do now is to build the control rig. The control rig is going to have the actual controls to operate it. Now if I bring back up this window um, that I just had, uh, where's it gone? Where's it gone? This one. This is what we're going to end up with. This is the control rig. So I've got a control. Oh, it's all freezing down on me. I've got a control here. If I spin that, it pans the fixture. And if I select this one, it tilts the fixture. So we can talk through how to get to that. So I'm going to do this one from scratch. Uh, first of all, I've already got two versions of this in here while I've been working on it. You need to create a control rig. So you need to take your skeletal mesh. Remember that skeletal mesh you created by going right click, uh, convert to skeletal mesh from your static mesh. This time we clicked on the skeletal mesh that we just created, right click, go to create and control rig. And it will create for you a control rig, which is done for me down here. OK, open that up and you get your model with the bones. So nothing here, just forward solve and my two bones I've got. And obviously if you've got a much bigger rig, you'll have a lot more in the way of bones here. So we need to create controls for these. So I'm going to select both of these. Uh, right click, new, add controls for selected. It's really important to make sure that they don't go into the hierarchy of the bones. If you right click and do just a new control or control in, it will leave it inside the, uh, the hierarchy, you need to do shift P to drop it out. Um, but we don't need to do that because we've already built this. Uh, but we also need the root. The root is very important. So I will do this as well. New, add controls for selected. I think I did do it and deleted it, didn't I? So make sure that is all in the hierarchy, in the same hierarchy as your bones. So tilt needs to be underneath the pan. There we go. And now we're going to build the controllers themselves. So let's just go down here. I'm going to leave them all as red. Um, we need to change the shape. Where is it gone? Shape properties. Here. So I'm going to make it the bottom of it. Let's see. Uh, I might make it a star. Star thick. And then I'm going to lock my scale and I'm going to scale this up. There we go. Now this here is the transforms for the shape, not the actual object. That's up here. And we'll come back to this in a minute. Um, now we're going to go to the pan. I'm going to make this a circle that goes round. So let's do circle thick. Leave it red. I'm going to click on this and scale it out again so that it's easy to grab. OK. And then we're going to go to tilt. And same thing, I'm going to do a circle. But this time, after I've scaled it out, I'm going to rotate it round so that it's facing sideways. Now, if you do this up here, you're going to end up twisting the entire object. So make sure you're doing it on the shape transform, not on the current transform. So that is now in the right position. Um, now, it's very important that all of these transforms, when they're in their current, so you've got offset. Offsets will always be relative to the one before in the, in the chain. But make sure that current is always set to zero. Everything has to be zero, zero, zero. If you haven't got zero, right click on it, make sure that you're in local space, not world space, and do set offset transform for current. Now, if you've spun something round or you've you've moved it and you you know you want to like for instance I want to move this up a little bit, um, that is now going to change it. That's not a good thing because it'll end up uh, moving the the, the object um, as well. So you've really got to make sure that you only do it in the transform here. 
There we go. Um, and then that's that position. Now, if you want to put something back to where it was before, you can do Control Z um, to undo. But Control G is the way of officially moving an object back into its original control position. So that's worth remembering too. Right, so now we've got our controls. Uh, if I try moving them, nothing's going to happen. It's not actually connected to anything. Um, oh, no, control G. I'm actually going to put this back to zero so it stays on the pivot of the bone. Um, what we need to do is to build uh, a little bit of blueprints here. It's not very complicated. Uh, we're going to select the pan and the control, and we're going to get these. Uh, so click and drag into the window and do get control. So I've got these. I'll just separate them out, so I've got my pan and my tilt, and then we're going to get the bones, and this time we're going to do a set on them, so I'm going to click and drag these in, and do set bone. Let's move up our forward solve, connect up the execute pins, and now we're going to connect the transforms into the relative transform value here. One, two. Oh, keeps freezing on me because OBS is recording. So now we've got our controls connected. If I select my controller, I can start to move my light around. Select my pan, and I'll make it spin. So there we go. That is how you build uh, a static mesh rigged actor. Um, now I've compiled and saved it, I can chuck it into my scene. Um, and then I can use in sequencer to, to edit and control it. So that's my my controls there, I can start to manipulate it. That's how you do it.